Welcome. Now my honey my. And if you're a stranger, don't be a stranger anymore. Join us for a cup of tea and biscuit. And if that's your breaking the fast, excellent. I'll join you. just pray. Father, I thank you that we do not have to rush into your presence. But even when we do, you welcome us. You are the Father of
greater than our shame, greater than our dishonor, greater than our guilt. As we invite you to come, I thank you that you have brought us to come, to come into your presence, to taste and see for ourselves that you are good. Father, that's our prayer for each one of us standing next to us. That each one of us would taste your goodness afresh this morning. So let's read this together. We want everything to look at us. The directions of the season, our opponents, the eyes and tendons, the reeds and rivers. We want to rise in our darkness around us. We can be the beauty of the Father, I can 
peace. I agree that I am not what I ought to be. Father, I confess that I am not as loving as I need to be. I'm not as patient. I'm not as filled with joy. And I don't have your peace. Father, these are my confessions, and I pray that you would hear the confessions of each one of our souls. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and are themselves forgiving. you've been drawing in in your mind closer to God. There are things that we want to pray for. Just as we had three people lighting three candles, we have three themes that we can pray. And we can have three people pray on each theme. That would be an amazing triplet, wouldn't it? Firstly, let's pray for children. Pray, pray for children finishing the school year for safety and fun across the summer holidays. Give thanks for all who work in education and pray they will enjoy a restful summer break. Second thing is, let's pray for the party at the park tonight, for safety, for fine weather, for an irresistible call to come and hear this good news and the real meaning of Christmas. And thirdly, let's pray for the Christmas series services over this period, that people would come. And there would be a desire amongst us to invite others to share in the joy that we're experiencing and to know Jesus. Three things for children and education, for party at the park, and for our Christmas services. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for children and for the gift of life that you have given us in children.
Father, I pray for our services over Christmas period that you would fill this place with many souls. Souls who have come to rejoice and even it might only be once that they come every year. And Lord, I pray that they would find you here. That they would hear you and that those people who are in darkness will have seen a great light. And Lord, you know all the prayers and thoughts of our heart. We offer them all up to you in the precious name of our, your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We have readings. Diana? The reading this morning is from John 8, verses 12 to 19. The validity of Jesus' testimony. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him, Here you are, appearing as your own witness, your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I came from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Father, I just ask for your blessing upon Shashi. I pray that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts that love what you say, and feet that are quick to run to do what you ask us to do. We ask that you would anoint Shashi's lips as, she speak, as he speaks with us this morning. Thank you. Well, we are continuing our series, I am Jesus, the I am sayings or I am statements of Jesus. So this morning we are going to explore Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. So good morning family, Moran of Anua and uh, Superba, yeah, welcome. So we need to learn three languages, I think, yeah. So, okay, the, here is the first question. What is the closest experience you have to complete darkness? Absolutely absence of light, no darkness. Have you been to those situations? Absolutely no light, complete darkness. How did you feel? Scared? No. Brave? Lost? 
It is quite a scary experience, isn't it? I had a very uh, scary experience where when I was studying in seminary, I was sent uh, to for the six months of internship into Himalayan mountains. And my job was to visit the church members which used to live in a different mountain. So one is this side and the other one on the other side and you had to cross through the valley. And one night, uh, walking with the help of let lantern in hand and walking through the valley and climbing the hill. As we just were about to ascend on the halfway of the hill reaching to the church member's house, out of nowhere, my lantern was full of kerosene. It was bright. It just went off. And I had no clue where I was, where I was going. And it was utter darkness into the valley. Uh, and, and it really... Uh, I had one of the most scariest experience. How about the second question? Describe best experience you have had with the light. Many of us have had lights, uh, experiences, maybe bright light, maybe you were in stadium or somewhere. What made the light wonderful or the beautiful? What, 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 where was it and uh, what provided the light? So. Here are these two questions for you to explore today during the morning tea time to talk to one another. Or if you come to the party at the park and if you run out of the stories, you can explore these two questions to discuss about the darkness and light. Or ask the friends today, if you come at the party at the park, ask people about their experience about the darkness and light. And then if the opportunity rises, let the light shine of the light of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. So the word light, light is used in connection with joy, blessings and life in contrast to sorrow, adversity and death. At an early time it came to signify God's presence and favor in the, in the Bible it, in contrast to God's judgment. If you study through Genesis 1, the very first thing, what happens as the Spirit of God hovers over the waters, it says, let there be light. So there, the very beginning of the scripture starts with the light. And if you read Revelation 22, there will no more need of sun because God himself will be the light. So here is a scripture which we have in our hands. Starts with and ends with, with this very important uh, word which we need to take in account. Um, and, and of course you can study through the scripture and you can find that from, uh, you know, the, the Bible contrasts light and darkness as a metaphor between the good and evil. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, which we read in John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus made this statement in the context of festival of tabernacles, which celebrated the end of harvest and reminded the Jews about the Moses and desert wanderings. The Israelites had been guided across the desert by pillar of light uh, uh, in the sky, which was symbolized during the, this festival the lighting of the golden menorahs or the big dose candle bars. So this part of the Gospel of John <coughs> pictured against the backdrop of the festival of Sukkot or otherwise known as the festival of booths or shelter or festival of tabernacles. Four names, Sukkot, booths, shelter or tabernacles but they were not four festivals it was the one name what you call the four names for the same thing so if you hear a jewish friend say about sukkot or they talk about booths it is the same festival of tabernacles this festival was and still is the longest and most important and most joyous festival of Jewish liturgical calendar. Uh, you can study through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Um, 
When was the last time we read numbers? Maybe it would be a good time to read at this time. Uh, it starts five days after the Feast of Atonement and lasts for seven full days of joyous celebration. Seven days of long celebration, lighting of the candles and food and festivity. This festival of tabernacle uh, com commemorates God's presence with his people in the wilderness. It's remembering God's guiding his people in cloud and fire to the promised land. His presence in tabernacle, his provision of food and water, his care and protection on that 40 year long dangerous journey through the wilderness. King Solomon, when he built his temple, he dedicated the temple on this during this festival. Uh, and so that festival became much more meaningful and reinforced the connection to the temple, to the tabernacle, and God's presence with his people over the ages. Even after the exile, when the people came back to the promised land, there was a building of the second temple, after Solomon's temple, which was destroyed by fire by the Babylonians. When they came back from the exile, they built the second temple, and Judas Maccabeus rededicated the temple as it was uh, this, uh, it was rebuilt. And the festival is being more and more deeply tied to the experience of the presence of, of God with his people on the journey through the centuries over time. The festival also kept alive the memory of the booths and shelter the people of Israel lived in when they received the covenant and ten commandments at Mount Sinai. For the whole seven days of the festival of the people of Israel to the present day, live outside in shelters made up of the palm leaves, vines, and other greenery, fruit, and vegetables. So if you go to Israel during this time uh, of the celebrations, you'll find people living outside of their houses. They build a shelter or the booths or the tents, uh, and then they live in those for seven days to celebrate. The festival not only looks back, but it also looks forward and is connected to the mission of Israel among the nations and coming of the Messiah. So in Jesus' days, the temple, at night, the lighting of the menorahs reminded people of the glory cloud that led Israel through the wilderness by day and the pillar of fire that lit up the camp by night. The cloud of fire that had rested on the Mount of Sinai at the time the law was given and descended upon the tabernacles afterwards, filling the Holy of Holies of the temple. So this festival, tabernacle, played a very, very significant role in the lives of the Jews. And even till today in Israel, it plays in the lives of the people. And so this Candle bars or the menorahs which were built were 50 feet high. 50 feet high. Is this wall would be 50 feet? No. It will be taller than that. Those of you who are into the <laughs> counting, it must be there. so tall. And then lighting the candle bars on that, and then the whole Jerusalem city at that time was lit up. The entire city caught the glimpse of it. And so people were engaged into the into this bright light and joined. And in fact, it was said that when these lights were burned in the night, these candle bars, uh, the, the, it was bright as the morning sun and lit up every nook and cranny of Jerusalem. This was a fire ceremony and torches, dances where young men would throw torches in the air and catch them. Those juggling act people do, it comes from that background, people doing it. The festival was a seven days intense and joyful spectacle, full of ritual and charged with deeper meaning and collective memories. It celebrated the presence and providence of God, the giving of the law and the future gathering of the nations to the light of God's presence in Jerusalem. So my friends, during this festival, expectations were that, that about the coming of the Messiah ran high at any other times than the, this time. 
So it is in this context, John has for us Jesus dropping a bombshell. I am the light of the world. Now this is the context where in a chapter, if, if you go earlier chapters in chapter 5 uh, and 6 where Jesus heals a man on a Sabbath, 38 years uh, he was sick and Jesus heals him and then the whole conversation is going on and after that Jesus travels again out of Jerusalem, goes to Galilee, walks on water, feeds 5,000 and then in, in the, in, into that context he talks about that Jesus is the bread of life and then again it's a, in the chapter 7 you come, it's a time of festival time of tabernacle Jesus is not coming he is in Galilee and his brothers are saying if you want to really get into the public go out and be there why you are just hiding in Galilee go to Jerusalem and Jesus quietly comes halfway into the tabernacle festival and then he begins to teach and that is the whole discourse or the whole teaching going on and that's where the whole context goes back into that that what had happened a few chapters back or a few days before, he healing a man and, and then Pharisees having a discussion uh, all about it. And within that context, Jesus drops this bomb, boom, I am the light of the world. Just imagine the impact that must have had on the people who were standing around him at that point. Imagine you are ardent, committed, Jewish person. Imagine yourself. You're standing in the temple. That this is the tradition. This is how you should know God. And within that context, you have this rabbi who is going around. He makes this statement. Someone making a claim in your midst that I am God. What would be your reaction? And that is where you have the whole, this conversation taking place. What on earth does he mean? That must have been the question. Isn't this just uh, more blasphemy from the carpenter's son from up north? Because up north was always regarded as kind of, you know, Gentile, mixed up Galileans. And this Galilean is making whole point. That I am, I am the one who we are looking for. The light of life is God. So how can Jesus appropriate these terms for himself? In most religions, light and gods are closely intertwined. The pagans worship the sun and moon. Uh, people have all the, you know, related to the sun activities. The, there are a lot of spiritual events which takes place. Eastern religions put a lot of emphasis on illumination and here is Jesus putting himself up there with all of that. So here is in that the broader context of. The light has a large place in most religions of the world. The Zoroastrians, have you ever visited Zoroastrian temple, fire temples with their perpetual burning light? Or of course, our terror has become so crazy with the Diwali or the Hindu festival of the lights. You know, and every home is colored. Or in fact, I visited during Diwali time our blockhouse Bay library, and I was shocked to find, uh, you know, that entire lit up was like I'm walking in any Indian building, full of all the. The Diwali uh, celebrations or Diwali decorations. And I was shocked to find that library has more books in New Zealand, I think, in my own language, in Gujarati and Hindi. Even if you have not read, those of you who are from those languages, you can find those books. So this here is a place, like, you know, you find... So all religions you can see around us who are so much driven or the focused on light. Well, uh, here you find that these religions of Hinduism, Zoroastrian, and all other various faiths who, who focus on fire, 
uh, is, is that the reality which is that God and bear witness to a common cry for the light of knowledge, hope and wisdom. Uh, and so everyone is looking for that light. In fact, one of the Sanskrit prayer, one of the Hindu prayer uh, in, uh, in a great Upanishadic prayer, which is known, kind of very well known around the world, uh, which is in fact uh, inscribed into the cathedral of the Christ Church, which is kind of no more long uh, existing uh, because the building collapsed into the, um, into the earthquake. Uh, but it was on the altar cloth, that's where I found here when I came to New Zealand, was inscribed this Sanskrit prayer of the from the unreal lead me to real. The darkness, from darkness lead me to light and from death lead me to immortality. These are the words inscribed and, and this is where the longing of the many billions of people is. And here, this is the universal cry which Jesus claims to fulfill. Jesus is not one who holds a light or even leads to the light. He himself is the light of the world. And that is one of the significant difference between all the deities of the world and Jesus. That everyone points to the light where Jesus himself is the light. Furthermore, Jesus is the light not simple to be gazed on in meditation on in trance, but to be followed in faith and in obedience through a diligent application of heart and will. Where there is such a commitment built on the conviction that Jesus is the one who he says he is, then believer will never again walk in darkness because a believer has a light of life. This light is eternal life, the salvation, the kingdom of God which Jesus has been offering to all his hearers. So my friends, in verse 12, again Jesus spoke to them saying that I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. So this is a life-changing verse. If you see it, from for what it is. See him for who he is. It says that the following Jesus is more than tagging along behind him. It means following him for who he is. Being so taken with him that you join yourself to him. And notice when you follow him, you have him. You have him as the light of life. I am the light. Whoever follows me, will have the light. You will have me, he says, as your light. If you follow me, you have me. I am yours. That is what Jesus says. I am your shepherd. I am your sacrifice. I, your living water. Your bread from heaven. Your God and your light. So unique, so different, so significant. You study the world religions, you don't find this comparison with anyone else. He is the one who is offering us to him as himself. You will have the light of life. What does this mean? What is the connection between light and life? Have a think of what is the connection between light and life? John 1, chapter John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 4, it has this answer. In Jesus was life, and this life was the light of human beings. The life gives the light. The life Jesus has and the life he shares with those who follow him gives them light. That is, we are dead and blind to the light until the life of Jesus is imparted to us by God's Spirit. And then we see. The eyes of our hearts are open and divine light streams, streams into our living spirits. And thus we have the light of life. The light that comes from new spiritual eye-opening life. The life that gives sight to the blind soul. Eternal life giving eternal, eternal sight. 
So my friends, what do we mean by the light of the world? Jesus spoke to them saying that I'm the light of the world. What does the word of the world mean? The whole, here the whole world is not being lightened. At least not yet. In fact, he says, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. Which means that if we don't follow him, we do walk in darkness. So we need to know, do you follow Christ? Do you follow Jesus? Then you walk in light. But if you do not follow in to Jesus, then you are in darkness. And where is the darkness? This darkness is in the world. It is in our hearts. So being the light of the world does not mean removing all darkness from the world as he walks through the world. This is what I mean, maybe these few four points. Jesus being the light of the world means that the world has no other light than him. If there is going to be a light for the world, it will be Jesus. It is Jesus or darkness. We have a very clear choice between that. There is no third alternative. You cannot sit in limbo situation in between. You have to have a choice, either Jesus or darkness. It means that all the world and everyone in it needs Jesus as the light. It means that the world was made for his light. This is not a foreign light. This is the light of the owner of the world. When this light comes, it is only makes sin plain as foreign and ugly. So, but it also makes everything good in the world shine with its full and true beauty. This world was made to be illuminated by this light. This light of Christ is native to the world. And Jesus being the light of the world means that one day this world will be filled with his light as the water covers the sea. And all the darkness and and all the words of the darkness and all the and all the children of darkness will be cast out. That's why Jesus called hell outer darkness in Matthew chapter 8, verse 12, or chapter 22, verse 13. In that day, all will be light. Jesus, the radiance of the Father, will fill the world, and everything will be beautiful with the light of Christ. So what does Jesus claim? Jesus' claim of the light of the world have common in the birth narrative of Jesus as we are celebrating this Christmas. As the people in Old Testament and Jesus' days long for God's presence and guidance in and through their lives, we too long for the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. In coming of Jesus as the Word made flesh, we the light of the world, living and breathing in his followers by the power of his Holy Spirit. God has come to us. God is with us. He is our Emmanuel. As Matthew records, account of the angel with Mary, having that conversation in Matthew 1, and which is where he say, where Matthew says that it was in a context of the fulfillment of of Isaiah's prophecy from chapter 7, verse 14, that God will be with us. God has come to dwell with us. That was the longing through through the Old Testament as we read about the light. God has incarnated to dwell with us. He is the light that everyone needs and every heart longs for. As we, we as the followers of light, are called to carry the light of life, into our context. Year of 2020 has reminded us that we need God's guidance, presence, and gift of salvation more than anything else in this world can be offered. So as we draw closer to celebrating this Christmas, as we conclude this year of 2020, the words sung by Steve Green in 1984 comes to mind, which were kind of, I was reminded, Do you know this song? Every day they pass me by. I can see it in their eyes. 
empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries, only Jesus hears. And my friends, today in 2020, people need the Lord. We carry the light, we have the light of the world within us, then the people are in darkness. People need the Lord because at the broken, at the end of broken dreams, He is the open door. People need the Lord because it is our responsibility. When will we realize that people need the Lord? We are called, we as Christians, we are called to take His light to a world where a wrong seems right. What could be to greater cause for sharing life with ones who's lost? Through his love our hearts can fill all the grief they bear. They must hear the words of life only we can share. Do you know this song? Never heard it? It was very famous in 1984. Steve Green had sung People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He is the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize that we must give our lives? For people need the Lord. Tonight, as we gather, as we do this part in the park, as part of the collective effort of all the church. This is the cry. That is why we're doing it. Because people need the Lord. Not just they need a good time. They need more than good time in the 2020. They need the Lord. So in con conclusion, my friends, here is the one more question. The word to follow, the word to follow in John chapter 8 verse 12 in the Greek language is the continuous tense that is to continually follow Jesus. Jesus is speaking for a wholehearted discipleship, not casual utterance. In what ways might the light help us follow continually? In what ways would it help us? Well, if you read through this chapter 8 and in verse 30, as Jesus spoke about the light of the world, people were divided, but there were people who, who decided to follow Jesus. They responded. In verse 30, John writes that as he was saying these things, many believed in him. This is good news. Because Jesus had said in verse 24, 24, unless you believe that I am he, that is literally I am God, you will surely die in your sins. So here we have a picture of people passing from death to life. They will not die in their sins. They will be forgiven. Their sins will not be held against them. And when they, when they die, they will go where Jesus has gone. To the Father. So my friends, here is a choice Jesus makes out very clear in this passage. Either you believe or live and have the light. Do not believe and you live in darkness. People need the Lord. Because there is a very clear choice. Either darkness or light. Are you walking in light? You know in your own heart. And if you are walking in the light, be encouraged, but also bear the light for those who are living in darkness, that they may see the light. Amen. So let's sing our next song, King of Kings, uh, as the music team comes uh, and prepares for us to 
sing this song and prepare us to partake in communion and as we share in offering there is also opportunity to pray if there is something on your heart for which you need to need prayer uh, you can come for prayer uh, and we'll uh, prepare ourselves to partake in the communion and to taking bread and sharing in the cup and I invite you during that time to seek the Lord um, uh, 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 that whether you are in light or you are in darkness and if it's so seek the Lord so that we may walk in the light as he is in the light
Father, we praise your Son, we praise your Holy Spirit, that you are here, you lead and you guide and you strengthen us. And we acknowledge this day as we come together around your table that the Lord is here, God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right of the hands and prayers. Let us pray. Please be seated. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this day acknowledging that you are a Father of light. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. And Lord, we thank you for your gift of yourself into us as the Holy Spirit to light us and to lead us and to guide us. We thank you. We thank you for Jesus and his claim and his proof into our lives that he is the light of the world who was crucified for us, who was buried and who risen on the third day to bring forth us a new life. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise. And we join with your people all around the world declaring your great glory and saying together that the Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Lord, giving you glory, praise and honor. Because we learn from Jesus on the night before he died. He took bread and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper, he took the cup and when he had given you thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do these as often as you drink it to remember me. So we proclaim the mystery of our faith together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and the resurrection and looking forward to his coming in glory, we ask you to accept this our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son, be filled with your life and goodness. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We say the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Draw near and receive the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ in remembrance that he died for us. Let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Come, God's people. Those of you who are assisting, please come forward. And the music team and others. Thank you.
welcome. I'm glad you made it today. Please take a seat. I'll just read through some of the notices. And um, there's five notices here, but one of them is not relevant to you, but I won't tell you about that. First one about the newsletter, then about the party, then about our Christmas services, and then our Sunday night movies. So there's only four notices. Okay. So the first one. The newsletter. You got a newsletter? You got a newsletter? It's been emailed to you if you haven't got one throughout there. Alright? Second thing. Um, who likes a party? Yeah. Who likes a party? There's a party in the park tonight. Tonight. Down the road. Just down here. Where? Where? Craig Avon, right? So it's a Craig Avon Park. Get behind this shirt. Anyone? Anyone get behind this shirt? Please. If you like very behind this shirt, I will always put that on. Man, you like being that We need people with high vis shirts who can handle our bubbles and telling shirts. Contact Claire or find who's there. That's number two. Party in the park. First one was what? Newsletters. Third one is our Christmas service. Here we go. I don't even see it. I don't need to tell you. <laughs> the fourth and the final notice is Sunday night movies. Sunday night movies. What? What? Yes! Sunday night movies! Whoa! Hey, no! No! They start on the 20th, and they start at 6 30, and the first one is going to be a mystery Christmas movie. How many notices were there? There are four notices. There's newsletters, there's a party in the park, and there's all the Christmas services, and there's various things. So, um, So um, let your light so shine that the world can see all these good deeds and they will do what? They will give glory to the Father. Do you notice this light though? Something about it? You don't want to follow it from a distance. You need to get close to benefit from this light. Can we have the dismissal come? Go forth into the world in peace and in joy. We go in the name of Christ. And again, don't be a stranger. Come and have a cup of tea. Have a biscuit.